Welcome on into another edition of the Wolverine. We're on our YouTube page here as well as your podcast feed. Whether you're watching or listening, we appreciate you joining us. Clayton Safey along with Anthony Broom. Uh, we are going to talk some Michigan football this offseason uh, full of events, of course, and uh, we'll get to all of that. We'll get to Michigan basketball in a little bit as well. Uh, Anthony, I was thinking a few days ago, man, what are we going to talk about on Thursday's show uh, on the football side of things? Obviously, a lot going on with basketball, but plenty to talk about now. Uh, a couple nights ago, it uh, comes out that Matt Weiss uh, is on administrative leave. He's under investigation for computer access crimes. We'll talk about that in just a second. But even probably, you know, maybe not more interesting news, but kind of the headline of the day is you wake up to a Dan Wetzel report from Yahoo Sports saying, you know, kind of some things that we had heard behind the scenes as well, that Michigan's going to fight with Jim Harbaugh against the NCAA here and, and kind of stand up to them. But uh, maybe even more so than we thought. Harbaugh, uh, you know, was hit with the level one violations along with the program being hit with four level two violations for some minor recruiting stuff back in 2021. And, you know, Harbaugh's was basically for misleading the NCAA. Well, it turns out, you know, he kind of just said he didn't recall a lot of the things, which is kind of the political answer, right, that you see all the time uh, these days. And they're trying to say that that's a lie uh, now that he has maybe admitted some culpability in, uh, you know, for the program in some of these events. So very, very interesting. Uh, a couple things that come to mind right away is the NCAA, you know, they better be ready for a fight because Jim Harbaugh, he likes stuff like this. You know, I'm not saying he he wants to be in this position. He would much rather it be smooth sailing right now. But, you know, he's not going to back down. He has retained Tom Mars, who has done a, a fantastic job in a number of cases involving sports and the NCAA lately. And then uh, another thing is, you know, if you're a Michigan fan, it's got to feel good that the contract – or not the contract stuff, but, um, you know, Jim Harbaugh's decision on whether to stay in college or go to the NFL is behind them because – there's a lot going on uh, right now, and um, you know it, it's kind of nice to have that shored up and not have that type of uncertainty when we see uncertainty elsewhere here with this stuff. But uh, you wake up, Anthony, to this uh, Dan Wetzel report, and what are you thinking? I'm thinking it's just it just doesn't end. I mean the drama, the the drama, the the sagas. It's uh, I did a hit with uh, uh, with the huge show. I think it was yesterday or the day before. It was like. Every time it, it's like if you have a cover all bingo card, everything is covered. I mean, going back to I when I when I talked to those guys, it was going back to, you know, think the Mike Hart stuff at Indiana. Then next week, Penn State, you have tunnel stuff. And a couple weeks after you have more tunnel stuff with Michigan State. You have the fallout from that. You have the Blake Corum injury. You have Ohio State week. You have the Mozzie Smith stuff. You have the Harbaugh saga. You've got the Fiesta Bowl. You've got. Matt Weiss stuff now that we'll talk about. It's just like, can we just have a day? Like, I'm happy to have stuff that keeps us busy. And and uh obviously, like people call people will call it click. It's not clickbait. It's this is the news cycle and this is what's going on. So as far as Jim Harbaugh and the NCAA, um listen, there is I have to figure out how to word this carefully here. If there was any sort of misleading or dishonesty with the NCAA, then yeah, that's something that you might face some actions for. But um, com you know, coming out of this report, it doesn't seem like the NCAA has a whole lot to suggest that Jim Harbaugh lied. And whether he did lie or or misremembered or whatever you want to call it, if you don't have that's pretty hard to prove unless you have ironclad proof and a smoking gun. So um Based on what we know, Michigan is backing him on this. They do. It seemed like the talks with the NCAA were going well until this uh, this NCAA um, until the report came out from Dan Wetzel. It's almost like it reminded me of uh, um, from Ricky Bobby, where they're just saying, "Okay, we'll let this go away. All you have to do is say that you like crepes. That's it." <laughs> it reminds it reminds me of that. So, Great scene. I mean, unbelievable um, scene. Great, tremendous right scene. There. And Ricky Bobby says, "I'm you go ahead and crack my arm like the Liberty Bell because I ain't saying it." So, Frenchy. Um, this is all a long winded way of saying. I think the best summation of it I saw uh, was from Nick Baumgartner on Twitter, who said something along the lines of, "It's like the Michael Scott Paper Company, where 
you try to close us down, we're just going to come back with something else and something else and something else. So, um, yeah, I mean, this narrative, now there's a narrative being pushed that there's all this corruption and Jim Harbaugh doesn't have control of his football program. I mean, it's kind of exhausting. Um, yeah, I mean, if like I said, if you're if there was any sort of dishonesty or, I mean, I know the NCAA is useless, but if you tell someone from the organization to, to pound sand, uh, that's not going to go over well. So, I mean, this thing isn't going away anytime soon. I mean, I, I think that if there is like an investigation, it will take years probably before it gets done. I mean, they have guy they have coaches on wiretaps and other scandals talking about oh, brazenly talking about uh, giving recruits bags of money and things like that. Um, it's not just, I know we've kind of spun it into the whole burger gate thing because that's the easiest way to meme it. it it's obviously a little more serious than that. Like if um, you're not completely upfront and forthcoming, but uh, no pun intended. I just, this is ultimately to me just a nothing burger. And if Jim Harbaugh serves a one or two game suspension, I think that will be probably the extent of it. Yeah, I mean, and he may serve a one to two game suspension in like 2026 or something like that. Because, yeah. as you said, I mean, it came out, it was this year, right? That Sean Miller, it was deemed that he is going to have no official punishment from the NCAA. Now he lost his job at Arizona after keeping it for a while amidst all of that, because Arizona knows when you hire a guy like Sean Miller, you know what you're doing and you want to win. And you're kind of saying, hey, do what you need to do to win. Um, but you know that you know that aside, I agree with you that it is more complicated than just a burger at the Brown Jug, which is kind of the rumor. Um, but basically, to me, what that represents is that there were minor recruiting violations, stuff during COVID that happened. That you know, and some of it was workouts over Zoom where they were watching kids work out. There was actually one of them too with Thomas Fedone, who I believe is now at Nebraska, but was you know top 100 tight end and. His, I believe his cousin was battling leukemia uh, and Harbaugh got actually pretty close virtually, you know, relationship wise with and Sharon Moore as well with his cousin. And they were both doing uh, planks on Zoom. There's actually a screenshot of it out there. And, you know, I don't think at that point they knew they were breaking a rule. I think there were a lot of rules back then that people didn't know exactly what you could do. Um, but regardless, some minor stuff, and then you get the NCAA saying, oh, we're going to come after him. We got this. We think Jim Harbaugh misled us or lied or whatever. Um, and that's kind of what the NCAA is going to do. It, I mean, the Michael Scott paper company thing, I think, is a great analogy. And Jim Harbaugh is, I mean, what a great pull by you, Anthony. The, you know, He's not going to say that he loves crepes. Jim Harbaugh is not that type of guy. He's not going to give in like that, nor should he if he didn't do anything wrong. Um, it's important to remember too, that this is a guy who takes um, at least publicly, I think he takes offense to anyone saying that he was not truthful or that he did was not honest about something. So um, yeah, I mean for him, if you're, I just don't know if the NCAA is going to ever get him to cop to that, even if it happened, honestly. So it's one of those things where, again, if there's no proof of it, like I, I assume there would be some kind of penalty that comes out of it, but maybe the investigate. May, I think Michigan can honestly probably sit back and go, the NCAA might be dissolved before this thing even gets resolved or taken care of. Um, obviously they have a huge leadership change coming too. I mean, from Mark Emmert to, I'm sorry, I forget the gentleman's name. I believe he's an outgoing uh, governor of Massachusetts, I think, but um yeah, and right hey, you want to you want to uh, politicians a model a beacon of efficiency if you want to get investigations wrapped up. So uh, we'll just kind of leave that at that there. So I don't know. This is it's just it's exhausting. It's all been exhausting this off season, and uh, yeah, I, I I ultimately don't know what becomes of it. Yeah, it'll be interesting to kind of watch that, and one of the reasons why is because you also hear that. A couple things. Jim Harbaugh is coming back. We talked about that on Monday. Um, he announced about an hour before our live show. Thank God. Um, I was doing a radio hit about 10 minutes before the announcement came out. So I, everything I said was outdated almost immediately. Anyway, Jim Harbaugh is coming back. Jim Harbaugh chose to come back and pull out of the Denver Broncos job running 
before he has a contract wrapped up with Michigan. There's still negotiations going on there. And some of the things you hear behind the scenes is that they're kind of stalling that, or at least not going to put pen to paper officially yet until some of the hurdles are cleared with the NCAA investigation. A lot of it could have to do with optics, you know, letting the NCAA know that they are taking this quote unquote seriously, you know, that they're going to look into it. They're going to, you know, potentially self punish if they have to things like that. Um, But now you're at a standstill, uh, you know, and it's basically two fighters circling each other in the middle of the ring, Jim Harbaugh, you know, and maybe like Ward Manuel and Santa Ono and the rest of the university, behind him uh, against the NCAA, a bunch of, this is my words, empty suits. But uh, anyway, uh, and you're basically at a standstill at this point. Um, what are your thoughts? I, I, if I'm a Michigan fan, I'm not worried uh, because Harbaugh, you know, has said he's coming back. He's on the recruiting trail. He's doing all this stuff. He's taking his you know name out of NFL jobs. Um, so you're not worried in that respect, but you know, a lot of people were like, well, I'm not going to be convinced until pens put to paper. Well, we may not see that for a little bit longer. I don't know what the timeline would look at uh, like there, but that complicates this as well and adds to your point that there's just so much going on and, you know, we can't have a day off here. Yeah. I mean, unless there's a wide ranging investigation that Michigan football is, is this corrupt, the most corrupt program in college football which is not we know that's not the case because we know a lot of the people that work for them and and the things that go on down south aren't going up here so for me it's it's if you're michigan and you're standing by this guy which we believe them to be right that's the scuttlebutt anyways um i don't know what i don't know how that really holds up a contract because i mean maybe the optics of getting it signed before there's a resolution aren't great but if you have any reservations about paying him market value, then what are we even doing here? Which I'm not saying there are. I just I don't know how that affects the time. It may be just more of a scheduling thing. Maybe they can't get into the office to sign a contract because Jim Harbaugh has been on the recruiting trail with his staff. I know they've had Zoom meetings with the NCAA. I'm sure there have been meetings with him and Santa Ono and Ward Manuel. So maybe it's just a matter of everyone getting back in town and getting it signed, but you know, based on what we know and based on what you know, Chris Ballas has reported, uh, contract is, is I think the money is going to be, it's going to be a raise. It probably winds up being paid the, the, the most of anyone in the Big Ten. Uh, the buyout will be larger. I don't know that it's ironclad larger, but it is at least something significant. Um, numbers on that, I'm not really sure. But yeah, I, I don't see... I don't know that this really hinders progress there other than just when, when do these guys actually sit down and put pen to paper, which can be um, also, you know, you think the fact that he's going, that Harbaugh has the same representation that his brother does. And I would imagine some other, I don't know what I I believe his agent's name is Brian Harlan. Is that correct? Something along those lines. Yeah. I'm sure he has other NFL uh, clients too. And this is a pretty busy hiring cycle for that league as well. So um, I think it's really just a matter of, you know, once Harbaugh, once there's this public intention to return in terms of the statement, again, um, you know, came from Santa Ono and Harbaugh kind of doubled down on it. I don't know that there is a rush to get it done. As long as there's like a handshake deal, like, listen, this is going to get done. He's still under contract. So the clock isn't really ticking, but um, yes, still think sooner rather than later. Yeah, and from everything we've heard, there is basically a handshake deal, maybe not on numbers officially yet finalized, but that it's going to get done um, and that he is going to come back. And I want to point this out before we move on. We spent the last couple of weeks, you know, parsing through statements from mostly Jim Harbaugh about uh, even going back to early December. No man knows the future. I expect this, likely that. Uh, I plan this. Then he comes out with his definitive statement on Monday. It pretty much now we have enough data to know when he's hedging and what that means and when he's not hedging and what that means. So it, it's in terms of the no man knows the future stuff. And I do think that, that he's going to be here. Uh, and I do think the NFL could potentially be an option for him, but I just don't see him uh, going through this again. But if we do have to go through it again, we just have to keep that in mind. I'm going to set a reminder in my phone that, if there are hedging, you know, type of statements, then 
that's what you know it means that he's leaving the door open i don't know that th- this was necessarily in the plan today but can can we just talk what a possible nfl future and and i think with each yeah. passing year where he doesn't go back i do think it's more likely he stays because i mean you look at all of these guys that get hired are hot shot young coordinators or hot you know defensive coordinators young position coaches um the exception exception to that might be sean payton but even he coached in the league what was it just over a year ago so you know i'm not jim harbaugh's too bright a football mind to i i think he could adapt to the nfl but um just taking the information that we have available to us. I mean, it was either he or his representation that was calling the Carolina Panthers and they weren't interested in Denver. I think there was genuine interest from Denver given the Stanford connection, but it just feels like, uh, you know, I don't want it, to, it's, it's a little, it was a little bit more than just a negotiating ploy, at least my read into it. I think there's always going to kind of be that itch. Cause I mean, just even think, think about other, think about your own history, like other jobs you could have taken other opportunities you could have had in diff, not just jobs, but there's always kind of like that. What if thing. Um, but yeah, I just, I think the, I don't want to say the window is closed, but it just, it does it, the last couple years, it's felt like the interest was kind of more manufactured from the Harbaugh. End. And I don't mean to sound that disrespectfully, but that that's how it's felt to me. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that the door is necessarily closed uh, unless he wants to keep it closed. And I kind of think after this year that he's going to choose to do that. I mean, you never, again, no man knows the future, all that stuff. It does apply here really, because we're just kind of projecting out, you know, a year from now, but uh, I tend to agree with you there. And, you know, part of, you know, the reason why I think that is because I do think there was genuine interest from the Broncos. If you remember, Last year, as soon as it came out, and Adam Schefter reported that Jim Harbaugh is coming back to Michigan, you know he's he's coming back from the Minnesota interview and all that. You within minutes had reports from Minnesota reporters basically telling the Vikings side that oh he didn't have an offer, you know, kind of protecting the Vikings a little bit from the messaging that they were receiving from Viking sources. But here in Denver, I mean, when he pulled out, everything you you saw reported on the Denver side was that he was a top candidate. They were excited to bring him in potentially for an interview and, you know, that it was him that kind of closed the door over them. So uh, to me, that's important that Jim Harbaugh, and I wrote about this that night after he decided uh, and made that announcement is he followed his heart, you know, and and that's kind of what Jim Harbaugh does. It's the same terminology he used when he came here in December of 2014. He's unpredictable. You can try to predict what he's going to do. You can be a source close to Jim Harbaugh and say that it's a done deal if he gets an offer. But guess what? He didn't even let it get to the offer phase. So, you know, that's that just tells you that it's a reminder that Jim Harbaugh is unique and nobody knows what he's going to do unless, you know, it's him, you know, knowing that. And even then, I think there are times when he maybe changes his mind or, you know, you saw that maybe in 2011 with the Michigan job. So there's a lot of things there, but it's, it's tough to kind of predict. And I think that, you know, there it's unlikely that we probably go through this again. It's important to note, no beat knows the future. Yeah. So just leave it at that, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, as evidenced by, yeah, about 27 hours after this announcement from Santa Ono and Jim Harbaugh, that he's going to remain at Michigan, we get something, um, on Matt Weiss. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, great transition there by me. Credit to me. Lead into our ad here. Prize picks. Uh, it is basketball season. There isn't a better way to enjoy watching your favorite team than by playing daily fantasy with our friends at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the simplest form of real money daily fantasy sports and just pits you against the numbers. At Prize Picks, you aren't competing against other people, it's just you versus the projections available. Whether you're a fantasy sports nut or a casual fan looking to add some excitement to the games, Prize Picks is the perfect game for you. Prize Picks offers projections on any sport that you watch. This includes NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, men's college basketball, women's college basketball, soccer, WNBA, esports, NASCAR, tennis, MMA, boxing, disc golf, Euro basketball, cricket, and many more. 
It's the best way to have action on the game in states like Michigan, Kentucky, Alabama, Florida, Texas, Georgia, and over 70% of the United States. Prize Picks is currently operational in over 30 states and Canada, not Ontario. You simply select two to five players and predict if they will go more or less than their Prize Picks projection. You can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. This week, and we'll talk basketball in just a little bit, but Michigan at uh, Maryland tonight, I'm taking a little DMV special. I'm taking Hunter Dickinson more than 16 and a half points. He's had 32 and 21 in his last two meetings against Maryland, a team that didn't offer him out of high school. Now he was good enough to get an offer from them. That's kind of a little chip on his shoulder for not a huge reason. It's a new coaching staff, but he's still dominated Maryland. Uh, I have Terrence Williams more than six points. I think he's going to maybe hit a couple shots here. He's been, you know, maybe a stock down type of guy lately, but he's coming home. Uh, another DMV guy. And then Doug McDaniel, more than nine points. He's had 12 and 17 in his last two games. He was scoreless the game before that, but it was revealed he was in the hospital that morning before the Michigan State game. So Doug McDaniel's a stock up guy. He's on the rise right now as well. I will uh, take those three for a DMV special. I'm going to do a little bit of a Big Ten basketball special, but it's guys that are in the NBA. Uh mm. One game, which will probably be done by the time you guys even hear this, uh, the Pistons are in Paris playing the Chicago Bulls. I have Jaden Ivey going more than 15 and a half points. Uh, that game tips off at 3.10 p.m. from Paris. So again, probably we'll hear that after the fact. And my other pick um, is big game tonight, Golden State Warriors against the Boston Celtics. I'm going with Jordan Poole less than 20 and a half points. Feels like every time I go more on him, whether it be uh, on prize picks or elsewhere, um, but definitely on prize picks. Uh, it seems like he kind of lets me down. So I'm going the other way tonight. So Jaden Ivey, more than 15 and a half points. Jordan Poole, less than 20 and a half points. Okay, there you have it. Uh, download the prize picks app or visit prizepicks.com. Sign up using the code Wolverine to get an instant 100% bonus up to $100 on your first deposit. So if you deposit $100, Prize picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, prize picks will give you $50. Don't forget, that's the prize picks app or prizepicks.com and the code Wolverine to claim your bonus today and take the viewing of your team to the next level this season. Make sure to hit us up on social media or over on the Wolverine.com as well. If you um, got some picks, maybe we'll, we'll take those picks with you and, and just like that discussion surrounding prize picks always. So uh, make sure to do that. Uh, we'll get into the Matt Weiss stuff here. If you're still uh, watching on YouTube, make sure to hit the like button as well. Hit that like button if you're not a fan of the NCAA. That's what we ask. Um, so hopefully that that cranks up the numbers there. We appreciate everyone for doing that. Also subscribe to our channel. Um, Matt Weiss, as I mentioned at the top, and most people listening or watching know, Matt Weiss has been placed on administrative leave. There were unmarked... Um, police cars that pulled up to his house uh, on January 10th computer access crimes is what they're investigating. Anthony, you were able to dig up uh, a log from the university of Michigan police that, uh, you know, showed that there was a potential crime committed at Schembechler hall on January 5th, or that's at least when it was reported uh, reported that the, it happened between December 21 and December 23. Um, and, that log says that it had something to do with accessing uh, emails, you know, that he wasn't supposed to access. Um, there are rumblings at this point on what it is. It obviously seems serious. It feels to me at this point with a gut feeling that it's unlikely Matt Weiss will be retained, but I'm let, you know willing to let this process play out. And I do want to mention as well, you know, as, as should happen, that it, it's not the worst that you think of when you think of a computer crime right away. Um, so I will say that, you know, it, it's it's definitely not that. But, uh, Anthony, this goes down and, uh, you know, more news, obviously, for Michigan. And, you know, it, it's it's a really complicated process. I don't know the timeline here either. Um, but, you know, clearly, you know, not something you want to happen. Yeah, I mean, just I'll, I'll go from I'll just read from the crime log. Uh, there's a campus crime log. So th it's important to note. This is a U University of Michigan yeah. police matter. This, this is not a federal matter. It doesn't seem like it's a state matter, but it is a campus uh, police it's matter. It's not even an Ann Arbor 
police department matter either. Yeah. And that's not to say that that can't be forwarded to, um, you know, some kind of, again, I don't know how this stuff works, it, 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 but there are basically what the, the, there was a report made on January 5th from Schembechler Hall. You can go to this, the crime log and see the location that the report comes from. And it says, and I quote, an employee reported fraudulent activity involving someone accessing university emails, email accounts without authorization. Upon further investigation, it was found that a crime may have been committed. Um, this would seem to suggest, again, no one's named in this. It would seem to suggest that someone who works in Schembechler Hall reported that another person, presumably Weiss, who knows, uh, was accessing other email accounts without their permission. Um, other than that, we don't have a lot of information available other than, you know, I went and looked up some Michigan legislature and accessing any email account that is password protected without someone's consent is technically to the letter of the law, a criminal act. Um, so that is, we don't know what that is. Again, it's not, you know, there's a lot of speculation when, when a report comes out and it says computer access crimes, that could be anything from like, it's literally when you look at the definition of what that type of criminal designation is, that could be, a, that's literally anything pertaining to um, computer access. So that's like, getting past a firewall to do offshore gambling to something that could be much worse. Now it's not the worst thing that popped in your head. I'll let, I'll let your imaginations eliminate that uh, out of that. There were some really irresponsible posts and some irres reckless speculation as it tends to do uh, going around the message board on social media, but um, we don't know exactly what it is. Uh, there are whispers, there are inklings, but it is a police matter and that stuff is, is typically handled internally. So again, I mean, if it is a, if it is a criminal, if, if a crime was committed in Schembechler hall, it sounds like the game of clue. Now um, I would just expect that that person won't, you know, unless there is uh, evidence that can support, they aren't guilty of Again, it's always innocent until proven guilty, but yep. this doesn't feel like it will end well from him for him. And it feels like there probably will be an opening on Michigan staff soon. So um, I know there, there are people that have asked, you know, does it have anything? Was he sending game plans to TCU? Was he hacking into TCU? It's nothing like that. It's nothing Michigan related um, from what we've been able to gather. This is a Matt Weiss issue. And I think that uh, he, I, I don't know what comes from this, but it is, it is being taken seriously. It was a, whatever's being alleged was a criminal act. And I don't know that, uh, you know, just the, the the breadcrumbs that are out there. I don't know that Michigan will have a co-offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach. Uh, I think that that might be an opening soon. So, yeah, and I think you you bring up something that I wanted to point out as well. Just because Michigan's been in the news a lot lately doesn't mean that all these things are connected. And I've actually seen, read some articles on this that actually you know try to bring up. Uh, you know, NCAA recruiting violations from before Matt Weiss was even here in that, um, I guess you're providing context, you know, for why Michigan's been in the news a lot lately. But uh, to me, that, that just seems unnecessary uh, as well. And a lot of this stuff that you're talking about on social media, the reckless speculation, whatever comes from the rival fan bases, the ones that, you know, feel like they're responsible to kind of weigh in on everything that goes on, even though they have their own skeletons in their own closet. So I uh, just wanted to point that out too. Um, but you're right. Shifting the next logical topic is kind of what ne what's next. And a lot of that has to do with this investigation. Jim Harbaugh is very much a person who, uh, you know, respects the legal process. He's actually been involved and, and advocated for uh, different issues within that. Um, part of the, you know, going to Washington and, and doing stuff like that. So, and we've seen him back to his days at San Francisco, even with the Mozzie Smith thing, you know, talking about his respect for the process and letting it play out at the same time, you have, um, you know, a football program to run spring ball, still a little while away, a while away. Um, but it is going to be interesting to see what they do. If there is an opening, a lot of people on our message board saying, well, Greg Roman got let go from the Ravens today. Bring in Greg Roman. I did look at his his bio earlier. I mean, he, he was a quarterback's coach 
for a few years with the Houston Texans in the mid or early to mid 2000s, I think 02 to 05. Uh, you also have potential temporary replacement replacements. I mean, who's going to go on the road and recruit or, you know, who's going to take over quarterback duties if things do drag out quarterback coach duties or all that. Um, a name that's been thrown out to some people in conversations I've had is Kurt Campbell as an analyst um, who's by all accounts done a really good job here. JJ McCarthy really likes him as well. Um, but if you, if you're thinking full-time, you would think that Michigan would try to land, you know, the best possible candidate that could take some time that could, uh, you know, take some interviews with people all across the country. Yeah. I mean, I guess it just kind of comes down to what the timeline of this is. I mean, yeah. they're not going to, Matt Weiss isn't going to lose his job if the process hasn't played itself out. Cause again, everyone gets their day to defend themselves. And, but if there's any, you know, if it ever, if it becomes apparent that something, something actually did happen, which again, they searched his house. I don't know what became of that. Or we should, we should, we should probably clarify that too. It's been reported. There was a police presence at his house. Not that, the state police came and kicked the door down and took, you know, all of his computers out of the house. So, well, yeah. Um, and ESPN, I believe their witnesses, which were his neighbors, they did see them taking things out of the house, but mm. as, as some, you know, you get a lot of different people weighing in, but then I've also read as well, where it's pretty commonplace for, even if the, you know, crimes were not there, which it sounds like it was at Schembechler hall. A lot of times they will try to show up at your house early in the morning you know, and then confiscate things uh, that you may have been using at work, like a computer, phone, uh, tablet, that sort of thing, because you're not ready for it. You don't have time to hide it or destroy it. You get yeah. up, they they come right in, you know, that sort of thing. So, right. Yeah. So that's important to know too. Also um, not to call it out, but it was, it was some of the language in one of the stories was odd and that they made it clear that it, his house was a mile away from Jim Harbaugh. Again, I saw kind that of like, too. Yeah. Kind of linking it back to um, again, Whatever happens with this, it is a Matt Weiss issue. It yeah. is not a referendum on Jim Harbaugh. I mean, I guess if you want to argue that someone's character is part of the evaluation process of the job they're doing, that's that's your right. Um, and, and Jim knows that though too. I mean, that's the yeah. you, you hire a lot of people. Um, you you understand what you're doing there. They're they're representing the university. I don't think he would take himself out of that, but, but to make that sort of connection is crazy. And, and they've had, it's important too, that he hasn't been with the program for a week or so, at least I think it was January 10th. It was, he was pulled off the, the recruiting trail. He's been on leave since then is our understanding of it. Uh, Jim Harbaugh has kind of um, been back running the point on, I know it's un, sort of related. He's kind of been running the point. He saw Dylan Riola this week. It seems like that he's been in contact with the, uh, probably be the point man with the Jaden Davis stuff, as long as that's going on. So um, he's not with the program. I've already, I've seen people say, Oh, well, did Michigan put him on leave after the ESPN report? No, he's been, this predates that. Uh, so again, it's just, I feel like a broken record here. You let the process play itself out and whatever it is. I mean, um, I'm refraining from even, you know, some, you know, even the jokes made about it. Like someone said, Oh, well, maybe uh, the Philly special was an inside job or something. Actually, I think that may have been my joke on the message board. I was going to say, you, you. (laughs) (laughs) I have multiple personalities. So maybe I'll just, I'll blame it on them. Um, It was some levity in the, in the, in the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, computer access crime is just so broad. And outside of the campus log and some of the whispers and scuttlebutt, we don't really know what happened. So it's kind of hard to, to surmise what, happens next until it almost feels weird to even speculate about who a candidate would be because the guy's still on staff. So for sure. Um, we'll move on from there, uh, to some sports, Anthony sports. We're sports writers. Finally, um, with Michigan basketball coming off of a nice seven point win, eight point win, over, I believe, seven over Northwestern on Sunday. Bounce back after a two-game losing streak. Anthony, have you looked at the schedule and realized what we're in the midst of? It's basically the same thing <laughs> as last year when they went every other, but now it's two wins, two losses, two wins, two losses. I think it's either eight or ten games in a row. Um, uh, you know, and could be tonight if they win at Maryland. Um, 
and I understand that some people will be listening to this or watching after that game. Uh, I know a good chunk will be listening or watching before. So, you know, we'll keep that in mind as well, but Michigan gets back on track with a win over Northwestern. Um, you know, this team is really unpredictable. It feels really similar to last year. If they didn't lose to Central Michigan, I feel like they'd be in almost an identical spot. It feels a little more bleak at this point. But you turn back the calendar a year, and, and they were going into an Illinois game um, with hardly anybody with uh, you know out with COVID, and you know they lost that game. They showed some fight. It ended up being kind of a turning point. But Michigan looked dead in the water at this time a year ago too. We have to keep that in mind. So there is some life, but they're going to have to start winning some games that they're not favored in, something we said a week ago, and then they lose at Iowa and kind of blew that game and then go to overtime and, and lose. This is a good opportunity. Michigan's two-and-a-half-point underdogs at Maryland. I feel like we have seen some strides with this team uh, You know, recently. A lot of that, to me, has been the guard play and the shooting. Uh, they're up to 39.7% from three in Big Ten play. That's third in the league. You're seeing guys like Doug McDaniel really, you know, maybe not turn the corner, but even Jawan Howard admitted the game slowed down a little bit for him. Jet Howard, you know, continues to play fantastic on the offensive end. Uh, and then you have Kobe Bufkin, who is just really good now. Like beginning of the year, it was like, wow, he looks a lot improved. You know, he this is a, a different Kobe Bufkin. You know, he's doing this better. He's playing defense better. He's just really good now. Um, and, you know, he's going to have his moments. He's still the youngest scholarship player on this team. But to me, the thing I've noticed recently has been the improvement from the guards. Yeah, it's been it's been guard improvement. And, and even more than just the guards, I think their freshmen are playing a lot better. Uh, I've liked what I've seen out of Doug McDaniel. Uh, I think that I put the probably – probably overstated it a bit saying that he was the best freshman point guard since Trey Burke. Derek Walton was pretty darn good. Uh, but my Derek God, Walton he, had a much easier situation. He did. Um, he did. Um, it was on a much better team, much better supporting cast. He was basically, you know, just plugged into a team that was mostly back from that team that went to the national title game the year before. So yeah, I, I think that Doug has made a lot of Terrace Reed has been the one for me yeah. where, uh, he just coming. He just looked like a big body that was kind of figuring it out, and he still is that. But now he's, you know, he draws a ton of fouls, and it seems like he's finishing a little more around the basket. And the two big lineup, I know, small sample size, it's worked for them uh, with him and Hunter Dickinson on the floor. So I like the strides that those two guys have made. Um, listen, again, this will date itself because the Maryland game happened so quickly after this podcast will come out i'll be kind of irked if they don't win this game i know that uh that that game on new year's day was one of the worst power five basketball performances i've ever seen from a team in terms of maryland's offensive woes they only had i think it was 13 18 points at the half or 13 points at that whatever it was um it was bad and this is a maryland team you look at what they've done they haven't won in 2023 yet, or I'm sorry, they have one win. It's over an Ohio state team that is completely out of sorts right now. I mean, has just completely fallen off the map. So for Michigan, you look at, it seems like every time we talk about this team, we take it into these five game chunks, right? You've got Maryland on Thursday night. You have a home game on Sunday against Minnesota, that there's absolutely no excuse to, to lose. I mean, it can only, it only really affects your resume if you lose the game. So you can't do that. Um, Purdue after that, Penn State on the road, Northwestern on the road. This team hasn't won a, a true road game yet this year. Uh, this team doesn't have when Minnesota. You go on the Minnesota. Well, okay. I said a true road game, not a, a road game in a, a mausoleum. It's the barn, baby. Come on. I know. I know. That's an oversight on my part. Um, you know, you go on Kempom, you look at their resume. They don't have what Kempom would deem a tier A victory yet. And four of their next five games are in that category. So you got to start winning some games here. Uh, I've kind of, I've dialed my expectations back to where, you know, I think this team kind of is what it is. And from there you start to grab, you, you start to track the growth of guys that I think will be here next year. So it's, it's the backcourt. I like what I've seen out of the backcourt. Um, Terrace Reed has, has, has made strides. I just wish Jet. I, I I love Jet Howard's offensive game, but I just wish he played a lick of defense. 
was even just maybe below average defensively, uh, this team would be in a lot better shape. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of growth to do. I still, you know, their their margin of error is gone, and this, you know, win to lose to it's it's literal it's literally a doubling down of what they did last year. And um, at some point, they kind of have to break the mold here. So this game Thursday night is huge for them. I know they're not favored. I, I think they'll win it. I think they'll win on Sunday, and that sets up a game. You know, they they were able to be, a huge resume win for them last year was that Purdue game at home when. Uh, people were upset that fans stormed the floor, but uh, still, uh, still a moment regardless. So, um, big, big stretch coming up here the next couple of weeks. Yeah, and speaking of the defense too, it's it's still been the most annoying part of this team. I mean, even in the Northwestern win, the second half of the first half, so the last ten minutes, they allowed thirty-one points to a Northwestern team that I would call kind of offensively challenged a little bit. They're a great defensive team. And I thought what Michigan did on the offensive end was super impressive, but you got to play better defense. They have played better defense a lot of times really since starting with that Maryland game. Um, And they actually rank third right now in defensive efficiency during conference play uh, third in the big 10. So that's improvement. But as you pointed out, and I was going to bring up as well, they still haven't played like the top five teams uh, in the big 10 in terms of, totality you know you look at the standings there's a lot there's a log jam there and Michigan's at four and two so they're actually kind of near the top but in terms of totality the season efficiency ratings Michigan hasn't really played a lot of those teams and you know it's going to get a little bit tougher so they've got to lock in defensively but uh final thought for me is just you win by 35 on New Year's Day at Chrysler and you can't feel good about that 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 game is basically irrelevant at this point you're not you're not starting out 35 to nothing tonight you're starting at zero zero you're starting against a team that wants to get some revenge on you against a Maryland crowd that doesn't like you, especially Hunter Dickinson. Uh, and, and he knows that and he, he thrives on that, but this will actually be Hunter's first time playing at Maryland in front of fans, uh, I believe. So that that'll be interesting because they did not play there a year ago and it was no fans the year before that. Um, so he's got to face them and they get pretty crazy over there. It's the spring break capital of the world, according to John Rothstein. Um, but <laughs> You got to keep that in mind. You got to stay focused. If you're Doug McDaniel, Terrence Williams, those guys going home as well in front of fans for the first time, uh, as Phil Martelli said, you can't be playing for the you know your family and, and friends in the stands and and you know people you may know or the people yelling at you. It's got to be the same thing, you know, for the staff and players that you came there with. So that's going to be important. But big game tonight. They're all big at this point. Sunday's big, even though as you said, it won't do a ton for your resume, but they just need wins at this point. And to yeah. your point as well. If they go every other here, two two wins, two losses, two wins, two losses, doing the math, that would put them at 17 wins uh, going into the Big Ten tournament. Not going to do And then they'd it. need a few uh, in, in in that, you know, down in Chicago. So you're going to have to do a little bit better than this. You're going to have to steal some of those wins. And tonight's a big opportunity. So is next week against Purdue at home. Um, so we'll kind of see what happens there. But any final uh, thoughts before we wrap up? The Big Ten is down this year, and that that yeah. should be that. That's an opportunity for them to get rolling if they can sustain something. But I don't. It's really the defensive effort. I mean, at, at a certain point, I think after that Central Michigan loss, I think they were at 104th nationally in in defensive efficiency, and a, a couple games went by after the. Uh, the, I'm sorry, the Michigan State or the uh, the Maryland, the Penn State game, the Michigan State game, they moved up to like 61st or something. And then just in the last couple of games, obviously it was an overtime game, but you give up 93 to Iowa and almost 80 to Northwestern. They're back to 84. So like that little, it just, defense is a buy-in thing. Defense and rebounding is, that that's the attention to detail stuff. And this team just gets too lazy with that. And um, that's bothersome. And that's why even with it being a down big 10, I can't give them the benefit of the doubt that they will get this figured out because I haven't seen there at no point this season. Have they, have they given you a moment where you go like, you know what, maybe they've turned the corner. You get to a game like the Michigan state game and you're like, okay, winnable game. Then the offense isn't able to give you anything. And then you get yeah. to team like Iowa and then the defense, it's just, it, it's, Again, exhausting has been the word that's been used a lot, but um, yeah, it's it's been disheartening, I think, 
And 17 and 14, if that's what their fate looks like, if that's the type of year this is going to be, I'm sorry. I mean, that's, that's not, it's not acceptable. It's not acceptable at Michigan and it shouldn't be. And that falls on leadership. I agree. Uh, last thing for me as well is there are going to be the outlier games like Michigan state on the offensive end where you just couldn't hit a shot, could not hit a, any sort of jump shot whatsoever. And you had a ton of good looks because they were really coming after Hunter Dickens in there. You got to just be good enough defensively because more times than not, this offense has really clicked and played well. If you look at their four worst defensive performances of the season, all four losses, there are some other ones where the defense, if you look at the numbers, was not very good, but it was just good enough to win those games. Uh, Eastern Michigan, Penn State, Northwestern, you know, those weren't great defensive performances. Kentucky, you were right there, uh, but they were good enough because you have a good enough offense. So, uh, Saudi Washington, I know if he had any hair left, he'd be pulling it out some at times with this team on the defensive end. I see him, you know, he kind of stands up, he's watching his team on defense. They let him down a little bit and he kind of turns around and he's, you know, pretty upset. And, and I get it because this team has been frustrating to watch on that end, but they have made some steps and, you know, we'll kind of see how they kind of progress here, but just be good enough defensively. I know that's not what Saudi's preaching, but that's what I'm preaching. Just be good enough on defense and it'll win you some games, right? We've already seen it. So uh, we will leave it there for today. We appreciate everybody for watching and listening on the YouTube channel. Uh, on our podcast feed as well. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up if you're not a fan of the NCAA. Uh, hopefully we <laughs> rack that thing up. Let's get to five, 600 here. And then uh, also hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to uh, get notifications anytime we go live or drop a new video. Uh, thank you, everybody. Enjoy the game on tonight, if you're listening before that, on Thursday. And we will see you next time.